Okay, um, look, when you guys get your zero product property and you switch the signs and get positive 8, negative 9, positive 2, this is supposed to replicate your x axis. That's why your table is yep. horizontal so that you kind of see it matching up. Okay, you want most negative to most positive. Negative 9 to 8, right? Negative 9 is the smallest, then 2, then 8. If they are x-intercepts or roots or zeros or solutions, that means the y value is zero. So when you go to plot it, that's because they are points, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know my graph's ugly, so sorry, but. Okay, um, that's because they're points on the axes or x-intercepts. Okay, now you have to come up with numbers in the regions. Like, what is the graph doing to the left of negative 9? What are, where is the graph located between negative 9 and 2? Where is the graph located between 2 and 8? And where is the graph located to the right of 8? Meaning, is it above the x-axis? Is it below the x-axis? You have to figure that out. So you have to come up with a number. Okay, look, these functions shoot off. They're x cubes. So whatever number you put in, it's going to cube. So you don't want to go negative 20. It's too far away. The number is going to be really big. So on these, just negative 10, 9. Just go one unit over. If you want to go 2, it would be brave. Go 2, but then number's taking off. Okay? In between here, you want the midpoint if you're comfortable with decimals, you should be able to do 0.5s. Okay, so from negative 9 to 2, what's the middle number? There's 11 units between them. What's half of 11? Five and a half, right? Or you go 6. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, I would go in the middle, right? But, you know, so that's negative 8, negative 7, negative 6 negative 5, negative 4. So this is negative 3.5. If you want negative 4 or negative 3, you're not wrong. It's just not the middle number, but I would not dock you. Okay, and then from 2 to 8, what is it? 5? Five? 5. Oh, see, this one's nice. And now you just throw it in the calculator and input output. So let's see if I can type. And I'm still recording, you guys. I'll, I'll hurry up. Negative 10 minus 8. Oh my goodness, I cannot. Why can't I type? Why can't I type? Negative 10 plus 9. Why keep typing? Doing the wrong one. I'm moving on. Negative 10 minus 2. Okay. And I get negative 21.6. Now, I am going to get decimals because of that A value being a negative, right? I mean, being a, a decimal, I am going to get decimal answers. So that's 21 decimal 6. If I replace the negative 3.5, but if you want to do 3, that's fine. Oh, did I do them all? Oh, okay, I did them all. And so I get 34.8. And that's positive. So, so far, this is negative. This is positive. What's my 5? <laughs> Tafik, I'm recording. What are you talking about? Oh, is it positive 5, you guys? Yes. It's po oh, okay, let me delete that. And you get 12.6. And then I need to put in 9. <laughs> and I get 12. Positive 12.6? Oh, I was like, wait, did I mess up? I just got the same answer again. All right, so look. Um, I'm not going to graph it beautifully, but let me just make the point. Look, 
at negative 10, I'm in the negative y values. That means I'm coming from below. Between negative 9 and 2, I'm in the positive region, so I know I'm going up and coming back down. Between 2 and 8, I'm in the negative y value, so I'm dropping and coming back up, and then I end positively. You guys will also get taught as far as um, we'll get to um, this. we'll get to all of that. But that little part of knowing your sign, negative, positive, negative, positive, we're going to cover whether it goes through the intercept, whether it bounces off, we'll cover all of that. But that's how you're graphing. Make sure you get your numbers from most negative to most positive. Pick numbers in between two intercepts. And then on the wings, just go one digit over. Yeah? Can I shut off the video? Yeah, okay, very good. See, easy peasy.